today on this 2006 Chevy Silverado 2500 HD, we will be installing Heide Goose part number 9463-34. We're underneath the vehicle and the first thing we want to do is go ahead and take the spare tire out and, and get it out of our way. Next thing in preparation, we want to go ahead and lower the exhaust off of its two rearmost hangers. We've got one right here and one forward up here. To remove the exhaust off of its hangers, I'm just going to go ahead and spray the stud down with a lubricant like a WD-40. And you can either take a crowbar or a pair of pliers to pry that off of there. The next step is to go ahead and remove the heat shield over the section just forward of the rear axle here. From here to here is the section that we need removed. And we can do this by one of two ways. We can go ahead and unscrew the entire heat shield by removing the bolts that are holding it on. Or we can just take a cutting tool and go ahead and just cut that section out, which is what I'm gonna go ahead and do. Okay, now we got the heat shield cut and out of the way, we wanna next go ahead and bend down the heat shield for the gas tank itself. That will interfere with the cross members when we go to put those into place. Okay, now that we're up in the bed, we wanna go ahead and take the dimension that is specified in the directions and go ahead and mark out and drill our hole for our height abuse. On short bed models, we'll be using 44 and a half inches. And that's gonna be off the rear edge of the bed. And we just wanna center that dimension in between the wheel wells. And with those two dimensions, we we'll take our center punch and center punch that spot. And then we can go ahead and drill our hole. We're gonna be using a quarter inch pilot hole to start the process and then we'll enlarge that to our three and a half inches. Now that we've got the hole drilled, we can go ahead and go underneath the bed again. And we're gonna be loosening the truck bed itself next. There are four bolts on the underside of the bed on each frame rail. There are two here at the rear, and there are two forward ones that are on the outboard side. I wanna make note here before we go ahead and slide our cross members into place, you'll notice that the two cross members are a little bit different. The front rail has numerous holes here at the top and two carriage holes here on the side. And the rear one has no holes on the side and two carriage holes at the top and two oblong holes in the middle. To fasten the head assembly to the cross members, you're gonna to need to put in place four carriage bolts. Here on the rear, we're gonna insert our 5 8 carriage bolts into the top, and then here on the front, they'll be on the side. It's probably a good idea to go ahead and insert the carriage bolts before we get started, before we attempt to slide the cross members into place, because once we get the cross members under the vehicle, it can be difficult to get them into position. It may also help before we get the cross members into place to go ahead and clean off the threaded studs here at the end of the cross members. There's a lot of factory paint that's typically placed on these threads and can make the nuts difficult to get started on once in position. So what I've actually done here is to go ahead and remove all of the bolts on the driver's side. We're gonna pry the bed up over here and slide our cross members in across. We'll want the rear one seated against the hat channel here and we can kind of leave the front one loose for the time being. We'll go ahead and set up our frame brackets now and that'll kind of help us align our cross members into place. Now we're here at the east side of the bed. We're gonna go ahead and just very loosely install our frame brackets to get everything aligned. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and hang the frame bracket here. I'm starting on the driver's side. On the six foot bed, we're gonna go ahead and align it with the front hole and the second to last hole here. And you can see how the cutout for the hat channel slides around perfectly. And you can see here our frame bracket aligns with the oblong hole in the frame. That's gonna provide our one attaching point here to the frame itself. We're gonna be using the 5 8 hex bolt along with the 3 8 spacer. We're actually gonna be placing this from the inboard side with the threads facing out. And we'll attach that with the lock washer and hex bolt. We're also gonna go ahead and loosely install the fasteners here to the cross members. We're gonna use the flat washer, lock washer, and the nut. We're gonna leave the U-bolts off for the time being until we get our head assembly into place and then we'll come back and install those. So for now, we wanna go ahead and just install the passenger side bracket just like we did the driver's side. To put the head assembly in place, we wanna make sure the rod for the handle over here on the driver's side. And what we're gonna do is align the holes here in the front section with the carriage bolts that we had placed in the front cross member earlier. And then the carriage bolts that are in the rear cross member, we're gonna align those with the holes here in the top. Now we're gonna be attaching with the flat washer and lock nuts on each one of these carriage bolts. We'll go ahead and check the alignment of our head assembly here with the hole in the bed, and then we can go ahead and uh, snug down the head assembly bolts. We'll go back through and after that and attach our U-bolts to the frame. 
the, the holes we're going to be using on the frame bracket are going to be the one here at the bottom and the middle one here at the top. We're going to be inserting the U-bolt from the inboard side back out through these holes. And you make, want to make sure that you avoid pinching any wiring harnesses or brake lines while applying the U-bolt. We'll be attaching the U-bolt with a conical tooth washer and hex nut. Okay, we can just tighten those down a little bit until we get the one on the other side installed as well. And then we'll come back through and tighten everything down. Now that we've got the U-bolts in place, we can go ahead and start tightening our bolts down. We're going to start by snugging up the one here on the frame bracket. The 5 8 bolt and the U-bolts first. And again, we just want to repeat that process for the passenger side as well. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and torque the bolts down. We're going to start by torquing the frame brackets to the frame of the vehicle, followed by torquing the cross members to the frame brackets. We're going to repeat that procedure for the other side, then we'll go underneath and torque the head bolts. And then the next step is to go ahead and tighten the bed back down. You need to reinstall the bolts first on the driver's side, and then we'll tighten all of them down. Okay, now that we've got the bed tightened down, we can go ahead and drill out our safety chain holes. We need to drill out 9 16 holes to accommodate our safety chain u bolts. What we want to do, or attempt to do, is to drill into the lower recession of the corrugation of the bed. And what that's going to allow it to do is when we have the U-bolts installed at the top, they'll actually be sitting down in the recession of the bed. And now that we've got our safety chain holes drilled, we can go ahead and come up to the top of the bed and just drop our safety chain U-bolts into place. You can see that the one here in my left hand has a shorter leg to it and we want that to go on the passenger side towards the rear of the vehicle. The exhaust comes right over that area and that shorter leg will allow it to clear the exhaust more freely. And then back underneath, we want to go ahead and install the flat washer, spring, and nut to the bottom side of the U-bolt. These are lock nuts, so you'll notice that they will get caught. And then we just want to go ahead and tighten those up until we have three threads protruding down past the nut. Then finally, we're gonna go ahead and install the handle. What we wanna do is take this and feed it from the outboard side of the frame near the tire and insert it into the release portion of the head assembly. What we wanna do is to take and align both the holes in the handle and the hole in the release assembly. And then we'll take the cotter pin and slide it through there, holding the two in place. Okay, and with the handle installed, we just need to make sure we put our exhaust back up on its hangers and put our spare tire back up into place, and our installation is complete. For the basic overview of the assembly here, when you want to release the gooseneck ball, you just play, take and pull the handle out, slide it off to the side until it catches, and then you can easily pull the hitch ball up. Then when you want to reinsert it, slide the ball back in, pull the handle out until it unreleases, and locks right back into place. This will conclude the installation of Heide Goose part number 9463-34 on a 2006 Chevy Silverado 2500 HD.